Act Two, Scene Three. Enter a porter, knocking within. Here's a knocking indeed. If a man were porter of Hell Gate, he should have old turning the key. Knock, knock, knock. Who's there? In the name of Beelzebub. Here's a farmer, that hanged himself, on the expectation of plenty. Come in time, have napkins enough about you. Here you'll sweat for it. Knock, knock. Who's there in the other devil's name? Faith, here's an equivocator that could swear in both the scales against either scale, who committed treason enough for God's sake, yet could not equivocate to heaven. Oh, come in, equivocator. Knock, knock, knock. Who's there? Faith. Here's an English tailor. Come hither for stealing out of a French hose. Come in, tailor. Here you may roast your goose. Knock, knock. Never at quiet. What are you? But this place is too cold for hell. I'll devil porter it no further. I had thought to have let in some of all professions that go the primrose way to the everlasting bonfire. Anon, anon, I pray you, remember the porter. He opens the door. Enter Macduff and Lennox. Was it so late, friend, ere you went to bed, that you do lie so late? Faith, sir, we were carousing till the second cock and drink, sir, is a great provoker of three things. What three things does drink especially provoke? Marry, sir, nose painting, sleep, and urine. Lechery, sir, it provokes and unprovokes. It provokes the desire, but takes away the performance. Therefore, much drink may be said to be an equivocator with lechery. It makes him, and it mars him. It sets him on, and it takes him off. It persuades him and disheartens him, makes him stand to and not stand to. In conclusion, equivocates him in a sleep. And giving him the lie, leaves him. I believe drink gave thee the lie last night. That it did, sir, is the very throat on me. But I requited him for his lie, and I think, being too strong for him, though he took up my legs some time, yet I made a shift to cast him. Enter Macbeth. 
Is thy master stirring? Our knocking has awaked him. Here he comes. The porter exits. Good morrow, noble sir. Good morrow, both. Is the king stirring, worthy thane? Not yet. He did command me to call timely on him. I have almost slipped the hour. I'll bring you to him. I know this is a... I know this is a joyful trouble to you, but yet tis one. The labor we delight in physics pain. This is the door. I'll make so bold to call, for tis my limited service. Macduff exits. Goes the king hence today? He does, he did, a point so. The night has been unruly. Where we lay, our chimneys were blown down, and, as they say, lamentings heard. In the air, strange screams of death and prophesying with accents terrible of dire combustion and confused events new hatched to the woeful time. The obscure bird clamored the livelong night. Some say the earth was feverous and did shake. T'was a rough night. My young remembrance cannot parallel a fellow to it. Enter Macduff. Oh, horror, horror, horror. Tongue nor heart cannot conceive nor name thee. What's the matter? Confusion now hath made his masterpiece. Most sacrilegious murder hath broke ope the Lord's anointed temple and stole thence the life of the building. What is to say, the life? Mean you his majesty? Approach the chamber and destroy your sight with a new gorgon. Do not bid me speak. See and then speak yourselves. Exit Macbeth and Lennox. Awake, awake, ring the alarum bell. Murder and treason. Banquo and Donald Bain, Malcolm, awake. Shake off this downy sleep, death's counterfeit, and look on death itself. Up, up, and see the great doom's image. Malcolm, Banquo, as from your graves, rise up and walk like sprites to countenance this horror. Bell rings. Enter Lady Macbeth. What's the business? that such a hideous trumpet calls to parley the sleepers of the house. Speak, speak. O oh, gentle lady, 
Tis not for you to hear what I can speak. The repetition in a woman's ear would murder as it fell. Enter Banquo. O Banquo, Banquo, our royal master's murdered. Whoa, alas! What? In our house? Too cruel anywhere. Dear Duff, I prithee contradict thyself, and say it is not so. Enter Macbeth and Lennox. Had I but died an hour before this chance, I had lived a blessed time, for from this instant there's nothing serious in mortality. All is but toys. Renown and grace is dead. The wine of life is drawn and the mere lease is left this vault to brag of. Enter Malcolm and Donald Bain. What is amiss? You are, and do not know it. The spring, the head, the fountain of your blood is stopped. The very source of it is stopped. Your royal father's murdered. Oh, by whom? Those of his chamber, as it seemed, had done it. Their hands and faces were all badged with blood. So were their daggers, which unwiped we found upon their pillows. They stared and were distracted. No man's life was to be trusted with them. Oh, yet I do repent me of my fury that I did kill them. Wherefore did you so? Who can be wise, amazed, temperate and furious, loyal and neutral in a moment. No man. The expedition of my violent love outran the pauser reason. Here lay Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood, and his gashed stabs looked like a breach in nature for ruin's wasteful entrance. There the murderers, steeped in the colors of their trade, their daggers unmannerly breached with gore. Who could refrain? that had a heart to love, and in that heart courage to make love known. Help me hence, ho. Look to the lady. Exit Lady Macbeth, helped. To Donald Bain privately. Why do we hold our tongues that most may claim this argument for ours? To Malcolm, what should be spoken here, where our fate, hid in an auger hole, may rush and seize us? Let's away. Our tears are not yet brewed, nor our strong sorrow upon the foot of motion.
Look to the lady. And when we have our naked frailties hid that suffer in exposure, let us meet and question this most bloody piece of work to know it further. Fears and scruples shake us. In the great hand of God I stand, and thence, against the undivulged pretense, I fight of treasonous malice. And so do I. So all. Let's briefly put on manly readiness and meet at the hall together. Well contented. Exit all but Malcolm and Donald Bain. What will you do? Let's not consort with them. To show an unfelt sorrow is an office which the false man does easy. All to England. To Ireland, I, our separated fortune, shall keep us both the safer. Where we are, there's daggers in men's smiles. The near in blood, the near bloody. This murderous shaft that's shot hath not yet lighted, and our safest way is to avoid the aim. Therefore to horse, and let us not be dainty of leave-taking, but shift away. There is warrant in that theft, which steals itself when there is no mercy left. They exit.